I'm sure you guys all love Rubik's Cubes. But what if you're solving a Rubik's Cube and the piece is popped? Don't worry, it's not the end of the world. But it seems like it. Keep watching to find out what is inside this Rubik's Cube and how you can disassemble and assemble any 3x3 Rubik's Cube. Let's go! Hello everyone, I'm Sid Chirna, and in this video, I'll be talking about what is inside this 3x3 Rubik's Cube. Let's get started, starting off with the Speed Cube from Integer. To start this video off, you're going to be needing a standard 3x3 Rubik's Cube, and you're going to need a felt screwdriver in case you need to loosen the tensions or pull out a piece. So you have your 3x3 right here. You need to turn it in a 45 degree angle. So these two little lines go down in this little ridge over here. And you wanna use your thumb and wedge it underneath like that. And this is a modern speed cube. So what you wanna do is pull the corner out of the way, do a little combination. It won't sometimes come as easy as that, but you have a piece like that. But let's just say that didn't come out like that. Let's say it's a little too tight and whatever you do, it won't budge. So you can take off the center cap with your fingernails or I'm gonna use my, screw, my screwdriver over here in my case. There you go. I need to want to loosen the cube's tension, so screw over here. You want to loosen it for about two seconds. One, two. So the front and you want to do the top. Comes out. One, two. And then make sure to remember which ones you tight loosened so you can tighten them back after the assembly. And then if that doesn't work, you could add an extra second. But notice that could make it a hundred times easier. So now all you have to really do right now is leave it all out of the way. Just keep turning your cube like this and slowly everything's going to just pop out like that since there's a piece of loose. All you do is that and soon you have to keep doing that and then the pieces will come off like this and soon you will end up with the core like over here. You will end up with the core like this. Make sure you don't lose any pieces. And if it makes it easier, you can add the center caps back on. So now, what do you do? How do you assemble this? So here I have organized all the pieces according to which side. So we have the white side pieces, the corners and the edges, or the first layer. Then we have the middle layer pieces, which are all edges. And finally, the last yellow layer, which we have the corners and edges. Let's get started. So first you want to make a cross, so like we can see yellow and red. So like in CFOP, the beginning, is C is cross. We made the first cross piece. And make sure you have a cube out so you can follow with me. And you might want to hold it in. Here's our second cross piece. And we have it in like this. So we made half of the cross. And we can uh, use this one, the third cross piece. And make sure you hold everything together with your hands if necessary. And finally, we have the fourth cross piece. And you want to hold it together. And here we have a cross that we assembled. And now you want to put the cube like this, or your assembled part of the cube. And now use the corners. We have a blue, orange, and of course white. And we, what we want to do is slide it like this, or in facing this way and blue that way and white down. You just want to slide it in, so like in an angle like this. You want to just put it, slide it in like that. And then if it's just hanging loose like this, you can just make it go all the way down and making a corner like that. And then uh, we could 
take this piece and then do the same pushing motion. And now we have our first F2L pair. And then we can do the same process, wedge it in. Sometimes you'll have to do some adjusting. Sometimes you can go like that, but that's okay. It happens. There we go. And make sure it go loose. And we have our second F2L pair. And then you just want to keep making F2L pairs. Like for example, go like that. And then make our now now we have our third F2L pair. And now are we gonna make our last F2L pair? Also a tip, you might want to make it put your cube in an angle rather than like this. An angle and then back down like that. And then we've made the F12, our first two layers, with all the pairs complete. So now we can use the last layer. So like on the on um, we can make the cross. So here we're gonna need our first cross piece. Like this, you might want to do some pushing. Don't break your cube, that's the most important thing. Now we have our, so we just want to make a cross. If, you, if it does help, you can move it like this, get some space. Oh, it's the wrong way. And then you can just put it like this. And don't move the red, make the blue. And you, have to find a corner, like this corner, oops. And you can just move it like this so you can create space for the corner. So like this. Now we have this little mini kind of block, which you can call it. And right here, you just assemble it and kind of Put your thumb in and do it like that. Create some space. We're almost done. And put it like this. Turn it back together. Now we have our remaining three pieces. So it's almost close to the finishing of the assembly. So you want to take your corner, put it somehow, push it in gently like that. Just like this, you want to kind of pull it in. And right here, you want to just fix it in like this. And now remember when we just uh, took put the 45 degrees and pulled our piece out? You want to do the same 45 degrees. And if you have anything like that, do like that. Sometimes in my cube, the case is like this. It makes this weird corner thing. So what you want to do is just put it like that. Or sometimes it are uh, our primer. You or U prime or L prime or R prime would work. And now we have a Rubik's cube fully assembled and done. So the um it's all the same for all of the cubes. So we have like the 45 degree trick. Sometimes like on this cube over here, you can't get your thumb underneath. So you might need to use a screwdriver. So then you bring it up and the screwdriver will do it like this. So on this type of cube, you don't need to pull the corners out and you can have your like that. And I don't recommend taking out the Rubik's speed cube because it's kind of a hard blocky mechanism. So like it just doesn't look too good to take out. You know, the screwdriver, I wouldn't recommend it. And the next type of cube is Kind of like a GAN cube, 45 degrees. Put your thumb underneath, pull, and after a bit of loosening, do some combinations. Don't yank very hard or else the cube will break. All you need is a bit like that, and you have an edge piece. So the main thing is just be careful and apply the same algorithm, especially when you are doing the when you're putting it back in. And make sure if you like, loosen any tensions, like on this cube, make sure to always pop the center cap out. If I believe it was the red and, it could be the red and 
probably the yellow. If you forget, that's all right. Because you maybe even you feel like this. Two seconds or a couple turns like this. And like that. So make sure it's your cube nice and neat. So hopefully this video helped you drive your fear away from cubes breaking. Hope you all found this video interesting and learned something new, especially on how to disassemble and reassemble these cubes. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe right over here. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.